now we are on chapter number 7 and this is value of supply value of supply now we already know which are the supplies on which GST is applicable right we understand what is goods what are services right where GST is applicable where it is not applicable who is liable to pay at what rate it is payable when the liability accrues all that we have done including the rate because rate also depends on time of supply so in the last chapter we said liability accrues and whatever rate prevailing on that date tax is payable at that rate but what is going to be the value on which amount of tax will be computed what is going to be the value so from that point of view this chapter is the most important chapter for exam also because they, when, when they give you to compute the amount of tax lots of nitty gritties can be involved in the question first you compute the value then you determine the time then you decide the rate then exactly the rate is amount of tax is applicable right and otherwise also valuation is always an important area for exam but this little bit of computation is involved in this that's why this becomes relevant for exam okay now what is expected when you completed this the first it is given that the sections referred in the chapter pertain to CGST Act unless otherwise specified. All the sections are from CGST Act. And learning outcomes means what you should be knowing after the completion of this chapter. Comprehend and analyze as to what constitutes the value of a taxable supply of goods or services when supply is made to an unrelated person and price is the sole consideration for supply. So goods and services can be supplied to a related person as well as to a unrelated person. What shall be the value if there is a supply to a related person and if it is a supply to unrelated person right for that we are going to talk about only one section that is section 15 and lots of rules so here rules are more important than the section itself right in earlier exercise valuation rules were there service tax valuation rules were there so now here we have a combination of all right so that's why the rules are more important than the section itself next one it says identify the various inclusions in and exclusions from the value of taxable supply what is included and what is not included or you can say excluded for determining the value and this is the value for the purpose of GST only right it, it doesn't have to do anything with any other tax or this may not be the correct thing for other purposes so this is the value only for the purpose of GST because we are going to talk about that the, for the purpose of this chapter value includes all other taxes levies cesses etc chargeable except those which are under CGST IGST SGST UGST Act so if there is any other tax by the state government that is also inclusive there right that is also included in the value so it means there will be tax on tax 
but to a large extent all the taxes have been removed because of this right so the chances are very rare that any other tax is there but there can be then comprehend and analyze the various rules providing the mechanism to value a supply in situation where transaction value cannot be adopted in respect of certain special supplies. Goods are supplied to the sole distributor for resale at what value? Goods are supplied to a related party. What shall be the value? Right? So in the first point itself it is given when the supply is to a related party and when the supply is to a unrelated party. Right? So if it is unrelated, more or less section, section 15 itself is giving all the answers. But when it is related, or there is a situation when that cannot, then section 15 cannot help you to determine the value, then rules become relevant. Now say for example, section 15 is dealing with the price only. That says where price is the sole consideration. Now if price is not the sole consideration, then what? First situation, there is no price at all. Second situation, there is, a, there is a price. But other than price also, there is additional consideration. Third situation, no price. It is only additional consideration. Got it? So there are multiple situations which are not answered in section 15 but for that we have to refer the rules. So primarily there are two things, transaction between related parties and transaction between unrelated parties. So the first issue is when the parties are said to be related. when the parties are said to be related. For a layman, all my relatives are related. Right? But not for law. Even close relatives may not be on talking terms. Isn't it? So law doesn't go by that. It is having a comprehensive definition that if people are related this way then for the purpose of valuation they will be considered as related otherwise not okay and last is compute the value of taxable supply in various situations so in this chapter mainly what we are going to see how the valuation is to be done, where price is the sole consideration in parties are not related and what will be the valuation if either price is not the sole consideration or parties happen to be related or there is some, uh, some odd situation. Right? What is inclusive? What is to be excluded? And if nothing is available, then how to compute the value? Because without a value, there is no tax. Even if rate is 100%, rate of tax happens to be 100%. But if the value is 0, amount of tax is also 0. And we are not talking about the price. The title is value. Value means accessible value. And what is accessible value? On which amount of tax will be computed. Right? So this value, this is A 
assessable value. So assessable value is the value on which amount of duty is going to be computed. Okay, let's proceed further. We have few relevant definitions and lots of things are already known to us but still we will go through so if we can find something new we can focus on that who is an agent that's a person in agent means a person including a factor broker commission agent aditya del carder agent an auctioneer or a mercantile agent by whatever name called what is important in last line who carries on business of supply or receipt of goods or services on behalf of another whatever be the name given that is not important but what is his role that is important that he is supplying the goods or services or he is receiving the goods or services on behalf of another then that person will be referred as agent says not to be read consideration that definition we have already done long time before what is the meaning of family family word is also important isn't it because in india we can have family anywhere the whole colony is our family whole building is our family whole city is our family whole india is our family depending upon where where it is needed we change the terms isn't it but for the purpose of law there has to be difference so this says family means the spouse and children of the person what if the person doesn't have a spouse means he doesn't have a family and parents grandparents brother sister of the person if they are wholly or mainly dependent on the said person this is very very important if they are dependent then they are the part of family otherwise not right so chill understand that this is a printing error because this should be written differently for children also it is same if they are dependent isn't it a child for the parents a child is always a child even if he is 50 years of age not dependent can he be included in the family if i go by this sub clause then spouse and children are always family but in the second clause you see the parents grandparents brother and sister of the person only if they are dependent means the situation is for a person his child is always a member of the family but for the child his parents are family only if they are dependent on him hmm. 